the olden world written by tsar yoshi chapter 808 not your granny's griffins starlight sat by maple's bed in the infirmary holding her moon glass sword as the world went by it was a new day late afternoon and the ship was largely quiet harshwater and felicity had been working her friends were still stable Slipstream and Yala and Gerardo were resting, and she hadn't seen jam jars or glimmer. Everyone had given up on asking about the sword she carried. She wasn't going to tell them what she had done with it, though she suspected anyone who had been conscious to see her stab Chrysalis's crown already knew. But it wouldn't do to get anyone's hopes up. She polished the sword, running a hoof down its sticky surface, wishing it wouldn't cling to her like it did though maybe the souls inside were clinging instead. How many were there? Tens of thousands? Hundreds of thousands? One had to be Valais. It taunted her, frustratingly out of reach when Amber had saved her body and all the parts that should have been needed to put her back together again were right there. She felt like there should be a way to do this. There had to when Garshiva was able to do it for Niala. Knowing her friend was right there, and she couldn't do anything to help her hurt, like her heart was the wrong size for her chest, yet at the same time, having so many souls right there that would have been someplace far worse if she hadn't saved them herself, it was almost hard to look away from the sword. They needed each other. She wouldn't let the ponies she had saved down. Mm. In a nearby bed, Saffron stirred. Don't move, Harshwater instantly said, rousing herself from a catnap and stepping gracefully to the unicorn's side. Your leg is broken, on top of a lot of smaller injuries. We're safe here. Saffron instantly winced. Oh, my head. W where? On an airship. Careful, Harshwater urged, soft and stern. We had a bad fight. Do you need water? Sure would be nice. Saffron closed her eyes. Can't say I feel great, sugar cube. Harshwater quickly stepped to a corner where Granada had moved an intact barrel of water. Here, she said, raising a glass to Saffron's lips. Starlight, go find Felicity and Slipstream. Slipstream? Starlight asked, getting to her hooves and heading for the door. I don't think she's one of the doctors. Harshwater nodded. But she's been out scouting, and Saffron is the only other one who knows about where we are. Starlight swallowed disappearing out into the hall without further objections. When Starlight returned a short while later, slipstream in tow, Saffron was sitting upright, her leg bound in a careful makeshift splint. The pink pegasus followed her on wobbly legs and brightened when she saw one more pony up and about. Howdy, Saffron greeted, sounding slightly less dizzy. So what's this I'm hearing about us being back in Equestria? They say you're the only one who's been to check the place out? We're definitely south of the mountains, using the sun as a compass, Slipstream replied, leaning against a wall and stretching one leg at a time to fight off lingering cramps. So, you know anything about the area around us? Because, guess who volunteered to be in charge of scouting? Good question. Saffron tried a shrug, stopping and wincing halfway through as Felicity quietly slunk to her side. You've looked around at all? What's it look like around us? Slipstream sat down and rubbed her legs. There's a lot of small hills, tall grass, rivers coming down from the mountains, an ocean to the southeast, and something called a train track running along the shore that was easier to walk on. We went far enough to see a giant bay with a mountain that looked like a tree across the water. That's Equestria, all right, Saffron hummed. Sounds like we're just north of Griffinstone. Oh, Griffins, hmm? Felicity tilted her head, running her hooves along Saffron's side. I hope you don't mind me, by the way. Just trying to check your injuries again now that you're awake and moving. Doctors do what doctors do, Saffron replied nonchalant. Nandy's aren't your average Empire Griffins. There's only a few things you need to know about Griffinstone Griffins. First, it's actually a Griffin society compared to the Empire where ponies are in the majority. Only them around. Second, the mean, greedy, and don't like other folks. They'll treat you well only as long as you keep paying, and after that, you're out of luck. 
Fortunately, the Empire and Equestria use the same currency, so we can buy them off for a while. I wouldn't advise setting Hoof out alone without a safe stash of money on you. Well, that's hardening. Slipstream folded her ears. At least we have a lot of money left from the restaurant. So, what do you recommend we do? Saffron fought for a moment. In terms of where to go, well, they sell us food, though don't expect it to be too high quality. This isn't the best place to stick around, really. Can't we leave? Out of fuel and stranded in the hills, I'm afraid, Felicity sighed, drawing back from her Moncart ministrations. From everything I've heard, we might be stuck here for quite some time. Saffron's face fell. That's not so great, I'm afraid. You've probably seen if you tried flying around, but the terrain here isn't something you can just walk over. The only way I made it past all these rivers and tall grass on my way north was by getting a small riverboat and a punting pole to push myself upstream. Slipstream nodded, still stretching. Getting a boat like that sounds like an important goal, then. I think I saw a forest to the east. Maybe we can get wood from there? If not, there's a wrecked airship we could possibly salvage for timbers. Saffron tested a foreleg that wasn't broken, wiggling her joints and then smoothing a rough patch on her fur. The forest? Hmm. That's just on the other side of a big canyon that's somehow important to local lore. Can't remember the name, but that's definitely something you won't be crossing without wings. Might be able to pay some griffins to carry some of us, though. So what about the train tracks, Slipstream asked. Do you know anything about them? Saffron blinked. Those things? Oh, right. I guess you might not have seen a train before. The Empire doesn't have them, at least. It's basically a pair for a machine that gets you here quickly from the center of Equestria. Doubt it'll be of any use to us, except, as you said, a road. She tried to look to the window, but it wasn't at a good angle to be seen from the bed. Griffins don't care much for visiting the rest of Equestria, so the only time you get trains is when someone wants to come here, not leave. And the closer you get to the center of Equestria, the less they care to admit the rest of the world exists. So, this stop won't even be on a lot of maps, and you might need to be a bigwig to ask to come here even if you know about it. Long story short, it may as well be abandoned. Noted, Slipstream nodded. At least it will make a good road if we're walking to Griffinstone. But in order to get more than just harsh water and ivy air, we'll have to make a smaller boat for the rivers, and to do that, we'll need wood, which either means exploring the forest or the crashed ship. I guess I have my next exploration objective. I'll get to it as soon as I'm not feeling dead after yesterday's flight. Fortunately, Gerardo should be up before long and able to help, Maple added from her bed nearby. He only got stabbed with Starlight Sword, and it wore off after about a week when it hit me and Amber. The Black Sword wasn't with her, but Starlight felt a small note of appreciation that her friends seemed to remember them having it once again. Harshwater cleared her throat. One more important thing, now that you're up. You had a healing potion on you when you were teleported. Since no one was in immediate danger of death, we waited for you to be up to use it. Who do you want it used on? Saffron blinked. Well, who all is down, and with what? Your broken leg and assorted ailments. Maple has cracked ribs. Felicity pointed around the room. We're not entirely sure what's wrong with Meltdown, and Shine Spark has a cracked horn. Saffron instantly winced. Give all of it to Shine Spark, or as much as will help. That's not an ailment she'll want to pass up help recovering from. There's also Gazelle, who's mostly in shock, Harshwater added. Everyone else is minor and will recover on their own. Saffron lit her horn, testing her aura strength. Give it to Shansbach, she insisted. Though, since you're not mentioning Valet, I assume I didn't quite prevent her from not being an option. Maple folded her ears. Here you are, darling. Felicity pointedly didn't look at Saffron as she held up the jar, uncorked it, and slowly coaxed Shinespark to drink, stroking her throat with a wingtip to make her swallow. Shinespark's eyes were open, yet blank, and she reacted to the drink, not quite lucid. As the bottle slowly drained, her horn tingled with a faint light, and by the time it was empty, many of the lesser cracks had sealed, though it was still obvious where they had been. The bigger ones were noticeably smaller, though 
It didn't seem a single dose was enough to banish them. Uh, when Felicity pulled the bottle away, Shinespark licked her lips and rolled over, slightly more animated than she had been before. Hopefully, that will help her come around soon, Harshwater sighed. I can't believe out of the six unicorns on our ship, three are disabled, and one is Neon Nova. Slipstream shrugged. All we can do is wait. End of chapter 808